Hello guys, this is AOD with a guide on the pet sentry build some of you have or haven't seen me running T6 with. I've been running the spec before 2.04 as well, however, it only started to shine after the patch uh, due to the changes on how pet scaling works since they uncapped the crit damage on them. In this video, I will be discussing the playstyle, the gear, the spec, and variances of it, and we'll finish it off with actual gameplay. First things first, though. Uh, so get this out of the way. I'm not saying this is the best spec, however, it can compete and even get ahead of the usual fire cluster arrow loaded for bear that most people are running with right now. You won't be seeing as high crits as you would with the fire setup, you won't be able to rank that high on Diablo progress since there's way less physical damage items out there compared to fire. However, the damage output added up from all the sources which are the pets, sentries, uh, your attacks, adds up quite nicely uh, while also having the benefits of a big percent of your damage being constant, even when you're kiting on the run, CC and whatnot. On top of that, you'll notice that there is almost no downtime in your damage, except for the parts where your pets get stuck or the derpy wolf not keeping up. Okay, so on to gearing then. I'd like to mention that I won't be discussing lower tier gear, just the possible combinations with high end items. Uh, the spec has quite a few items required to make the work properly, otherwise it won't really be a pet sentry build. Keep in mind this is a physical based build, so wherever it's possible you should be stacking physical damage. Uh, that means amulet, bracers, rings, stone jordan, as well in some cases the helmets and aerials. I will also keep Mortar's for set bonus in all the gear combinations, simply because I love the utility gain from having all the pets out at the same time. Uh, plus the damage. You gain all resist, life regen, hatred regen, gold pickup, movement speed. Uh, the ferrets give you a standard 10% movement speed, so it frees up even bargain points or rerollable stats on your gear to get that 25% movement cap. Uh, and even an AoE slow from the, uh, the spider. Okay, so on to the items then. For gloves, you want Tesker and Theo, the must-have item for this build. It basically buffs all your pets as well as your sentries by increasing the attack speed by a massive amount for all of them. Uh, go for Trifecta here if possible. So Jordan with physical damage, dexterity, elite damage and crit damage or average damage depending on how yours roll. I'd prefer crit damage but currently can't have that. Ring of Royal Grandeur, preferably Trifecta, however whatever will do. On to the amulet then, you want physical damage, plus dexterity, crit damage, crit chance. Best would be the Xephyrian amulet, which makes uh, lightning damage heal you instead of damaging you. However, anything will do with the stats I mentioned before, just talking best in slot from my perspective, considering lightning damage is the kind of damage that uh, provides the most challenge for me in Torment 6. Um, Natalia's Boots plus the Natalia Slayer, you get a 3 set bonus via Ring of Royal Grandeur. Uh, dexterity, crit chance, discipline bonus, seriously, what is there not to like? On the Boots, depending on how glass you're willing to go, um, you'll either want Chakram damage or Vitality. Uh, now, as far as I know, haven't actually checked on the sign to confirm, Nat's Boots always roll with the same primary stats, uh, Dexterity, Armor or Resist Movement Speed. Hence, you can only get Chakram or Vite instead of Armor or Movement Speed. On to the Marauder sets, you want 4 set bonus here, uh, the shoulders, the leggings, uh, the uh, helmet. Uh, I personally like to take companion damage on shoulders. Um, helmet again is a matter of what you're willing to lose. You can have either Vite or Chakram damage. Uh, the Dexterity, Crit Chance and uh, Socket are implied, of course. Um, the belt, it's kind of debatable. Either Witching Hour for more constant and assured DPS while also being glassier, or Harrington's with high defensive stats and the secondary damage when opening chests. It says chests on the description, however, it works on everything that's lootable, uh, which includes corpses, caravans, cocoons, loose stones, weapon racks, etc. Uh, this is good for more burst damage on elites and as well on trash. It's kind of RNG though, depending if you have anything to click at that time to give you the buff. I prefer having them both in my bags, and depending on how many people in the party uh, have Harrington's, or what kind of rift it is, uh, some have way more lootable objects than others, to switch to the appropriate belt. Onto the cloak then, you'll want the cloak Garwolf, preferably Dex, or Resist, Companion Damage, 3 sockets. In your offhand you'll want a Calamity. Um, this is by far the best in slot item I can imagine for this and any other build actually. Well, there might be a couple I haven't thought of, but at least for this. You get a 20% uh, damage via uh, Mark for Death on everything for yourself and your party included. Um, about the bracers, any kind of bracers will do. You don't really need Reaper's Wraps for this build. Uh, you just want physical damage, dexterity, vitality, crit chance. Um, 
I currently have a Lacuni Sprawlers, which rolled pretty nicely, so I'm just keeping this since I already got Vitality and other items. On to the actual spec then. First slot, we have Smoke Screen with Healing Vapors. Uh, no need to go into specifics, since I guess everyone should know by now how good it is, especially in High Torments. Then we have Sentry with Impelling Bolt. Uh, this will be part of your main damage when encountering Elites, Rift Bosses, since those will be up most of the time, so you'll be able to drop the max amount you can on those encounters. Try to place them in a way so they hit as much as possible in a straight line. Contrary to how they worked in Vanilla, now they simply get placed at the position of your cursor instead of your character's position. The third slot is taken by Companion uh, with Wolf. This combined with the Mara set will give you all the passives as well as the axes when you use the ability. For slot we have Reign of Vengeance with Flying Strike, I really like this one for two reasons, the damage, since it's physical as well, and the utility. Cooldown is quite short and it allows you to burst down lead packs quite fast before they spread out. You can also mess uh, around with Vengeance, Side Cannon's Rune, or perhaps Fan of Nice with either of the runes depending on what you need, defense or offense. Um, main attack, either Entangling Shot with Bounty Hunter, slows them down by 80%, or Hungering Arrow with Devouring Arrow. Uh, depending on what torment you're doing this on and how well you're coping with it, you'll either want to have Entangling Shot for harder mobs so you can slow them down while your pet sentries chew on them, or Devouring Arrow to do more damage yourself but lose the slow utility. Secondary attack, Chakram with Razor Disc. Um, great spender, extremely low cost, good for spreading uh, Mark for Death to almost every mob on screen, as well as being able to do damage even when you're not attacking directly. By that, I mean it will do damage in two phases. One, the initial trajectory uh, where, to where your cursor is pointing, and two, after it reaches that point, it will start circling into a bigger and bigger radius until it despawns. For passives, we have Blood Vengeance, Night Stalker, Steady Aim, Call the Weak, if using Entangling Shot, or Custom Engineering if you're using Devouring Arrow. Reason why I chose this setup is because I'm using Smokescreen quite intensively on Torment 6 in some cases, so I really like to have as much discipline as possible for it. The playstyle. For Trash, you mostly want to run in, pop your sentry right away, Entangling Shot, then Chakram, or Devouring Arrow instead of Entangling Shot. Uh, you don't really need to use a Devouring Arrow, obviously, in the start, because you are only using Tangling Shot, either to slow them down or to gain the Cold Weak advantage. Uh, for Elites, you pop Sentry plus Reign of Vengeance to stun the pack, Wolves for the burst, uh, and all the other bonuses, uh, Entangling Shot to get the, uh, the bonus, and Chakram. Uh, drop the second Sentry or even the third one if you're using Custom Engineering and pack isn't dead yet. A uh, small trick about this build though, if your pets happen to die from the Anarch charges, you can simply unequip and re-equip your Garwolf or any Mara items and they'll be back up. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching, feel free to like, subscribe if you thought it was helpful for you in any way and also any questions you might have in the comment section. Uh, I'll do my best to answer as much as I can when I can. I will be exploring new builds in the future, especially after Blizzard will redo most of the elemental damage type on skills in a future patch, like they said they would. Um, now the gameplay video will come up, uh, so enjoy!